Hey everybody, what's going on? So today in this video, we are going to be talking about why I like to flip swim baits. So I made a video, uh, actually in my last video, I was talking about uh, the big, the big giant top water baits and stuff that I bought, and I mentioned about these jig heads here and how I like to throw the 3.5 gunner on the back of flipping jig heads and flip them around wood and grass and stuff like that. And somebody commented. Uh, asking you know talking about that uh the reason why I, I flip swim baits and i thought why not make a video on this um i've made a video once on this but i think it'd be good uh to cover this a little bit uh more in depth a little bit more i think uh would be just a bit a bit better of a video to go a little bit deeper into the reason why i throw a swim bait uh especially flipping um so a lot of people don't throw swim baits flipping now those people Probably don't know why I like to throw it. Probably don't, or think I'm crazy for throwing swim baits on a flipping jig head. But I tell you what, I've caught a lot of fish doing it. Um, I'll probably make this make the thumbnail of this video a fish that I have caught flipping swim baits um, because I've caught a lot of them. Um, I'll probably make this video the tie or the uh, thumbnail a picture of a fish that I caught flipping a swim bait uh, just because it works. It really does. Uh, so first we're going to talk about uh, the jig heads and stuff that I typically would use uh, with this type of stuff. Now this, these here are the jig heads I bought uh, off of eBay. Just quarter ounce size. Now quarter ounce is pretty much the only size I'll throw. Quarter uh, to three eighths. Um, I don't usually go over that just because I think that with a bigger jig head it kind of has a tendency to tear up more plastics. Especially when you're uh, using it with a double a cone barb keeper like that um, I think that a bigger heavier jig head will tear up your baits a lot easier plus I think quarter and three eighths are just the best all around sizes for a swim bait jig head or a flipping jig head um, in my opinion that's what my opinion is some people may have differences in that uh, but my opinion is quarter or uh, three eighths so the two that I use I don't remember the brand on this um, I threw away the receipt and I also threw away the package, so I don't know the name of them. Uh, I literally forgot. That's how bad my memory is getting sometimes. Um, but these here are some that I bought off of eBay. I got, they're in a two-pack. Black uh, paint is what they are. And I like them. They look really good. I have yet to put one on a swim bait yet. Uh, normally, I'll rig one of these up when I'm going to fish them. Um, I just have one right here rigged up. I'll show you that in here just in just a second. Uh, but I'm just kind of showing you the jig heads that I normally would use. Now, typically, if I can, if I can find them, uh, sometimes I'll find one in my tackle box that's not. Uh, but typically, I will go with one that has a vertical line tie. Uh, and what that means is that the line tie is the same as the hook and the weed guard. If you can look down the weed guard and you can see that the line tie is flat, that's perfect. That's the exact type of jig head you want to throw. These are made for flipping, so that's why they're like that. But another jig head that you can use that's good for it is a Arky style jig. So I've gotten a couple times, uh, one, yeah, one's right here. Uh, they're Arky style jigs, uh, they're Arky jigs from the Arky brand, but sometimes the band uh, loosens, loosens and skirt material falls out. And I just take the skirt off and throw just the jig head with a swim bait or a crawl bait. I actually have two of them here. One is brown and one is black. Um, the hook size kind of more depends on the size of the bait you're throwing. Uh, if you have one that's like, if you look at these two jig heads here, if you look at them, let's put them eye to eye. Right there is eye to eye. If you look at the one in my right hand, it would be this one here. The hook is shorter. It's noticeably shorter, about maybe by a quarter inch. It's about that much shorter. So with this longer jig head, I would go with a bigger bait, such as uh, the Doc Sewer Company 4-inch Swimmer. Uh, this one here is actually a color I've been kind of messing around with. It's called Okeechobee Crawl. It's green pumpkin uh, body with the green pumpkin tail with just a little bit of blue belly. I think it looks really good. Uh, that's kind of a color that I've been messing around with. Um, but that there, I would go with a longer shank hook, obviously, because there's a little bit more uh, bait there. Next, you know, with a 3.5 gunner, I'll go with the shorter shank hook. That right there, just about perfect. Uh, that's not to say that I won't throw the longer shank hook on the 3.5 gunner, because I will. 
you know, it'll give me a little bit more of a bite when that fish bites it. It'll give me a little bit extra hook, uh, just a little bit of an advantage on the fish uh, when they do bite. But if you look at this four inch swimmer compared to this jig head, it's just about perfect. If you throw it on there really good, it's just about perfect. And what I love about, uh, and we'll talk about this a little bit more here in a second, uh, but what I love about doing this is you don't have to only flip. You can swim it, you can flip it, you can run it along the bottom really slowly. Uh, you can swim it fast and pop the rod a lot and, you know, and keep it right up in the shallows. You can do a lot of things with this, and we'll talk a little bit more about that here in a second. But the Arky style jigs come with that vertical line tie. And the vertical line tie, especially when you're flipping around wood, matters 100% of the time. Now normally with these small little uh, small details and stuff like the the way the eye of the uh, the line tie is facing most of the time I won't worry about that uh, sometimes I won't worry about that but when you're flipping wood especially you need that vertical line tie the reason why is if you look that vertical line tie is not going this way if it's going this way against the jig is what I like to call it it'll hook anything that hits it but since it's vertical Anything that it comes over, it's going to just scoot right over. Anytime you're throwing something, and, it, and if you're swimming it, and all of a sudden it hits that limb, if or if it hits it up here, it'll just kind of roll off. And that is perfect. That's exactly what you want. But if you have a horizontal line tie, it won't do that. It'll hang up, and then you'll set the hook or something, trying to get it free. Or if maybe you think it's a fish and you can get snagged pretty easy because that hook will come around and hook at the, uh, the tree that it's stuck on and then you lose a jig and a swim bait and that, that's not what you want to do. Uh, so if you can, a vertical line tie is paramount in this style of fishing. Uh, that one there's got it, that one there's got it, and this one here's got it, and this one here's got it. All of, them ha all of the, my flipping jig heads have a vertical line tie. Um, if you don't have one, uh, just be a little bit more considerate of what you're fishing. Uh, if you're fishing a little bit more soupy, what I like to call soupy, uh, really nasty, slimy grass, you're probably going to be picking weeds off your bait a lot. Uh, if you're fishing around a lot of limbs, uh, you're probably going to have a little bit more of uh, trouble trying to get it through there without getting it snagged. Uh, sometimes it can help you. Um, you know, there's certain times where popping it off of that limb can trigger a bite. Uh, you can do the same thing with this here, though. Um, I just would rather not take the chance of losing my jig head and my swim bait. I would rather just keep fishing uh, over the branches and stuff like that. That's just me, though. I mean, most people would, but, you know, people are crazy sometimes. Uh, but the Arky-style jigs and the actual, you know, made-for-flipping jig heads are awesome. Uh, but this one here, this jig head here, I'm not going to take it off the bait because I've pretty much got it perfectly rigged, which is something that sometimes I don't get. Um, but this jig head here, I've caught a crap load of fish on this jig head, throwing it just like this right here with a small, you know, three and a half inch swim bait. Uh, this is a Strike King uh, flipping jig. It was a bleeding bait flipping jig. As you guys can see there, the hook is red and it actually had red eyes, but I took the red eyes off because it wasn't making the swim bait swim right. Um, and I actually took the skirt off as well because the skirt band broke and uh, I just turned it into a swim bait jig head and I've been flipping with this thing. I flipped it. I've thrown it around rocks. I've thrown it around docks. I've thrown it out in the middle of, you know, 20 foot deep water, let it sink all the way to the bottom. Uh, I'll tell you a quick story here. Uh, one day I was out throwing uh, this swim bait here with a, or this swim bait head with a Doxer Company four inch swim bait. Sadly, I didn't have my camera with me. I actually forgot it. One of the only times I've ever forgotten my camera. Um, I actually forgot it this day. And I actually patterned the fish to where I knew when I'd be able to cast out and I'd let this whole swim bait fall and it would be falling and that tail's kicking. It would go down to the bottom and then I'd pick up my rod and then I'd just swim it. And every time I'd feel grass, I'd pop it up real hard. And usually right after I pop it up real hard, it'd just go heavy real quick and I'd set the hook and I'd catch them, you know, around a two and a half, three pound fish. I ended up doing that probably six or seven times uh, and that was you know that's for a pond fishing especially around where I am um, that's a pretty darn good day of fishing you know six or seven fish on one thing uh, normally you don't get that unless it's you know a, a special type of a bite uh, so the reasoning behind why I flip swim baits over 
uh, certain other baits. Um, I don't. I normally don't flip creature baits a whole lot. Um, sometimes I will, like this year, I'll be flipping the flip out and the uh, the mud crawler. Um, but I'll still stick with my swim bait pattern because I love to flip them because nobody else does. Um, I think that a lot of people will look over flipping a swim bait, uh, especially because it's you know it's not really something that people flip. It's not it's not a made for flipping bait. It's made for swimming around brush and made for swimming around the flats and grass and stuff like that. It's not made for going in and out of brush and going in and out of mats and stuff like that. And that's what I think really helps uh, seal the deal with the bite is it's not something that they've, they've seen before. You know, very little people, if any people besides my own self, I'm sure, you know, there's probably somebody way out in the middle of nowhere that has figured it out too. I'm, I mean, I'm sure I'm not the only person to have ever taken or taken a flipping jig like this, put it on a swim bait and flipped it into a brush pile and caught a big fish. I'm sure I'm not the only person that's ever done that. I mean, I can't be. There's too many bass fishermen in this world for it not to have worked for somebody. Um, and the reason why I do it is it's completely different. Nobody that I've ever heard of does it. I've never seen a tournament angler or anybody like that doing it. Um, and I think that it just helps get a few extra bites when, you know, they're especially on clear water places. Uh, if you have clear water, this can actually get you a lot more bites than flipping a beaver bait or a crawl bait. Um, another thing that I love about doing this is it's got a completely different action than any other flipping bait. Uh, most flipping baits, it's one or two actions. It's either two crawl legs, much like the, the mud crawler here, or it's like four or two dead appendages, what I like to call it. And that is like the, let me grab one right here real quick, the flip out. It's a dead bait, it's a flipping bait. You know, it's, it's not really made for having a whole crap load of action like a crawl bait. But this swim bait doesn't have two arms kicking. It doesn't have a dead bait uh, action. It has that single tail. That single one tail that's just kicking. Just like that. All the time. And that is a huge difference between a swim bait and, another, and, and just another flipping bait. And I think that helps a lot. Um... Something that I personally like to do with this is fish it around deep uh, trees and deep structure that's wood. Um, you know, I normally would fish this around wood, obviously, because of the line tie uh, being the way it is. I fish it a lot around brush piles, deep brush piles, shallow ones. It doesn't really matter. Um, I like to fish it more around smaller uh, brush piles, you know, uh, what is it called? Um, constricted areas is what I like to fish it. I don't like to fish these type of baits in areas where there's thousands of different brush piles all over the lake. I like to fish stuff like this on isolated cover. Isolated cover, basically what that means is if you go to a whole giant lake and there is one big, you know, 40 yard long brush pile right in the middle, that's an isolated structure. Or let's say you go to a lake and you're looking at your graph or whatever, or you're just going down the bank uh, on, on the bank, you know, walking, and all of a sudden you see one brush pile here, and then 60, 70 yards away, the only other cover on this entire bank, there's a dock. That brush pile and that dock are probably going to be the best fishing areas that you can have. Now, what you throw will depend on your cover and your fish. You know, if your fish are a lot of clear water fish, you know, green pumpkin swim bait. Uh, if you have, you know, darker, muddier water, I would go with the black and blue or a uh, uh, maybe like a black magic color. Uh, I think those would do pretty good in, in muddier water. Uh, so another thing that I love about this is fishing around deep wood, basically like standing timber. Uh, this is something I've never seen anybody do. Um, this is something that I definitely know works because I've caught fish doing it. Uh, basically what I like to do is when I find an area that has standing timber or something sort of similar as standing timber, um, I'll take this, you know, just a jig head with a swim bait, much like this one right here, and I'll flip it. And I'll only make probably 10 to 15 yard flips, if it's even that long. Uh, and the reason why is closeness. If I can make it as close as I can, I'll just drop it vertical if I can. If I can get away with it, I will. But, you know, if you're from the bank, most of the time you can't do that. Uh, and if you're in clear water, most of the time you can't do that. But if you flip it right up next to the very base of the wood, right where it hits the water, right there, 
and it drops straight down. You want to bring out as much slack as you can. If you're sitting, you know, if you have a graph and you can tell, let's say you're fishing in 20 foot of water, bring out 16, 17, 18 feet of line and then just let it sit because it's falling. As it's falling, that tail is back there just kicking because of the weight of your head and it helps a lot to have a quarter ounce. Uh, I mean, you can go up to a half ounce. I personally don't just because it will fall a little bit slower. Um, and I, I definitely do believe with a bigger kicking bait, much as uh, the 3.5 gun or something that kicks a lot harder, it makes a slower fall because of how hard it's kicking back and forth. It's, it's keeping water uh, pressed up against it, and it's making it fall slower. Now, if it was just, like, let's say you just cut off the tail, it would fall like a bullet straight down. But if you leave it like that, it'll fall very slowly, and it'll keep that tail kicking. And when that tail's kicking you have all the action in the world. You don't even need to move the bait sometimes. All you got to do is drop it. If that bait's dropping, it's going down through there. Any fish that are along that tree, anywhere around that tree, uh, if there's branches coming off and that bait goes straight down through those branches, any fish that's on those branches sees that dying bluegill or shad or, or tilapia or whatever you're trying to mimic, it just sees that dying bait fish with a kicking tail swimming straight down and it thinks, hey, that's a quick and easy meal. I'll jump out and grab it. And it really helps in clear water or when the fish are school, uh, excuse me, schooling around brush. Uh, if you can find them where they're schooling inside of standing timber, you're golden. You can catch fish all day doing this. Uh, you can do this and topwater fishing. That's what I would do. I mean, if I could find something like that, I mean, I, heck, I'd be in heaven right then. I'd be throwing a swim bait on a jig head and a topwater walking bait. And that's all I'd throw. Because that bait's going down through there, it looks like a dying shad. And this can actually help you catch bigger fish, too. Because if, you're, if your fish are schooling on shad, the smaller ones will be hitting just random shad. They won't be targeting one single shad. They'll be hitting everything and just trying to kill them all. And that can help you when you're throwing something like this. Because those bigger fish, when those smaller fish are up there hitting all those shad shad will slowly start falling down and when they start falling down those bigger bass will come out and hit the bait so that is why i like to throw uh swim baits flipping um it just it gives them a different profile it's something that i don't think any other fisherman does uh, or anything like that so i hope you guys like this video uh, if you did make sure you like comment and subscribe if you haven't already uh, if you've ever done this uh, let me know down in the comments because I'm kind of curious of how many other fishermen actually have done this before. Uh, so thank you guys for watching once again.